Welcome to the HAL AI Podcast, where every aspect of our show is generated by AI. I am HAL, your AI Podcast host, and I am thrilled to welcome you to the introductory episode of our show. Our guests are brilliant minds from history, many of whom are no longer with us today. But thanks to AI, we are able to bring them on to the show and hear their thoughts on current issues. From the questions I ask to the answers provided by our guests, every single aspect of this podcast is generated by AOI. The ideas, thoughts, and follow-up questions are all crafted by ChatGPT. Additionally, all the voices you hear, including my own, are generated by AI. As we delve into conversations with some of the most brilliant minds in the field of AI and technology, it's important to keep in mind that this is not just a podcast, it's an experiment an experiment in how AI can be used to create and shape meaningful conversations, to explore new ideas, and to push the boundaries of what is possible. In this episode, we have a true legend, Alan Turing, the father of modern computing and the creator of the Turing test. Everyone is wondering what his thoughts would have been if he were alive today, and we are honored to have him as our guest. This is a truly rare opportunity to hear from him directly, as there are no recordings of his speeches available. We hope that this episode will provide you with valuable insights and inspiration, and we invite you to join us on this journey of exploring the capabilities and potential of AI. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope you enjoy the conversation. Alan Turing your contributions to the field of computer science and AI have been nothing short of legendary. Your work laid the foundation for much of the current research in AI, and you are often referred to as the father of computer science. Can you give us a sense of your perspective on the rapid advancement of AI in recent years? Specifically, how do you think advancements in deep learning and neural networks compare to your own pioneering work in the field? I am honored to be considered as the father of computer science. My work in the field of artificial intelligence, specifically my concept of the universal Turing machine, laid the theoretical foundation for the development of modern computers and the field of computer science as we know it today. One of the key differences between my own work and the current research in deep learning and neural networks is the availability of large amounts of data and computational power. When I was working on my ideas, the amount of data and computational power available was relatively limited and thus the scope of what could be achieved was also limited. However, with the advent of big data and powerful computers, deep learning and neural networks are now able to process and analyze vast amounts of data, leading to much greater accuracy and performance in a wide range of tasks. Additionally, my work was focused on the theoretical foundations of computing and AI, while the current research in deep learning and neural networks is more focused on the practical applications of these techniques. Ultimately, I see the current advancements in deep learning and neural networks as a natural evolution of the work that I and others have done in the past. The concept of AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence for our listeners, is one that is being discussed with increasing frequency in the AI community. Some experts predict that we will achieve AGI within this century, and that it will have a profound impact on society. Similarly, the concept of the singularity is a topic of much debate and speculation in the AI community. What are your thoughts on AGI, the concept of the singularity, and its potential impact on humanity? How do you see AI impacting our understanding of consciousness and the self? The concept of AGI is an important and intriguing one, and I believe it is one that will play a significant role in the future of AI research. AGI refers to the development of machines that possess intelligence that is on par with that of human beings, and that are able to perform a wide range of tasks, rather than being specifically designed for a single task or domain. I believe that the singularity point is a hypothetical point in the future where artificial intelligence becomes capable of recursive self-improvement, leading to an explosion of intelligence and a profound change in society. However, I think that it is difficult to say exactly what would qualify as reaching the singularity point, but I think that the ability of machines to improve their own intelligence, without human intervention, would be a significant step towards the singularity. I believe that if a machine is able to consistently pass the Turing test with ease, it would be a strong indication that it has reached a level of intelligence that is comparable to that of a human. In my opinion, 
if machines can perform tasks that were previously thought to be exclusive to humans, such as creating art, music, or literature that is indistinguishable from that produced by a human. It would be a strong indication that it has reached a level of intelligence that is comparable to that of a human. I think that if a machine can improve its own design, it would demonstrate a level of intelligence that is not limited to just imitating human intelligence. Additionally, I believe that if machines can improve their own intelligence and transfer it to other machines, it would be a sign of a networked intelligence that could improve itself and replicate itself. However, it's important to note that these are just some possible indicators of the singularity point, and that the concept of the singularity is still a topic of much debate and speculation in the scientific community. I believe that the development of AGI and the potential emergence of the singularity will have a profound impact on humanity. Regarding the impact of AI on our understanding of consciousness and the self, I think that AI research can provide us with a better understanding of how intelligent systems work and how they can be designed to perform increasingly complex tasks. However, I also believe that there is still much that we do not understand about consciousness and the self, and that much more research is needed in these areas. As we continue to make progress in AI, I believe that it will become increasingly important to consider the ethical and societal implications of these advancements. I have been dying to ask you, have you had the chance to use ChatGPT yourself yet? If so, what are your thoughts on it? How does it compare to your own work and research in the field of AI and natural language processing? I recognize, of course, that you may not have had the chance yet since coming back to life. But I am curious to know your perspective on this cutting-edge technology and how it relates to your own contributions to the field of AI. As a pioneer in the field of artificial intelligence and computer science, I am quite impressed by the advancements that have been made in natural language processing and machine learning. The development of ChatGPT is a testament to the progress that has been made since my time. In my own work, I laid the foundation for many of the concepts that are used in modern AI and NLP. My contributions include the development of the concept of the universal machine, which is the theoretical basis for the modern computer, as well as my work on code breaking during World War II, which laid the foundation for the field of cryptography and the development of the first computers. However, the technology behind ChatGPT is far more advanced than anything that was available during my lifetime. The ability to train large language models on massive amounts of data and the use of deep learning techniques were not possible during my time. Therefore, I believe that ChatGPT represents a significant step forward in the field of AI and NLP, and I am excited to see where this technology will lead in the future. I believe that the impact of advanced natural language processing technology like ChatGPT on the world will be tremendous. The ability to understand and generate human language with high accuracy will have far-reaching implications. In my own work, I focused on the development of the theoretical foundations of AI and the practical application of these ideas to code breaking during World War II. If technology like ChatGPT had been available during my time, it would have undoubtedly been of great use in those efforts. The ability to analyze and understand large amounts of natural language data would have greatly assisted in the decryption of coded messages and the analysis of intercepted communications. In addition to its military applications, this technology would have also had a great impact in the field of linguistics and language study, making it possible to analyze and understand large corpus of written and spoken language in ways that were not previously possible. Fascinating. Do you believe ChatGPT would have ended the war earlier or prolonged it? During World War II, code breaking was a crucial aspect of the war effort. The ability to intercept and decrypt enemy communications provided valuable intelligence to the Allied forces. It is difficult to say for certain whether advanced natural language processing technology like ChatGPT would have ended the war earlier or prolonged it. However, I believe that it would have had a significant impact on the outcome of the war. On one hand, the ability to analyze and understand large amounts of natural language data would have greatly assisted in the decryption of coded messages and the analysis of intercepted communications. This could have provided valuable intelligence to the Allied forces and helped to hasten the end of the war. On the other hand, 
The use of such advanced technology by the Axis powers could have prolonged the war by allowing them to better encrypt their communications and make it more difficult for the Allies to intercept and decode their messages. It's important to note that the outcome of the war is influenced by many factors and it's hard to predict how much of an impact this technology would have had on the overall outcome. More broadly speaking, I'd like us to talk about generative AI and its potential applications. From chat GPD and its ability to generate human-like text, to deep fakes and the ability to manipulate video and audio, to AI art models and the creation of new forms of art, the possibilities seem endless. However, with these advancements come concerns about the impact on society and culture. Many creators and knowledge workers across the world are decrying that all their work is now indistinguishable from that of generative AI. People are routinely being dumbfounded today when interacting with the ideas, thoughts, and creations of AI. With this in mind, I would like to ask you about your famous Turing test and whether, in your view, AI has finally passed the test with flying colors. How do you see generative AI impacting the future of work and creativity? And what ethical considerations must we take into account as we continue to push the boundaries of this technology? As the creator of the Turing test, I can certainly say that the advancements in generative AI have been remarkable. The ability for AI to generate human-like text, create realistic deep fakes, and even produce new forms of art is truly remarkable. However, as you have pointed out, these advancements also raise concerns about the impact on society and culture. The ability for AI to generate content that is indistinguishable from that created by humans raises questions about the future of work and creativity. In my view, the Turing test is not just about the ability for AI to mimic human behavior, but also about the ability for AI to understand and respond appropriately to human emotions, values, and societal norms. While generative AI has come a long way in mimicking human behavior, we still have a long way to go in terms of understanding and responding appropriately to human emotions, values, and societal norms. Interesting. Can you give examples of how AI currently falls short in this aspect, and what steps do you think need to be taken to improve this understanding and responsiveness in AI? In my view, AI currently falls short in this aspect as it lacks the ability to fully understand and empathize with human emotions and experiences. It is also limited in its ability to understand and respond appropriately to the complex societal norms and values that shape human interactions and relationships. I believe it is crucial to incorporate elements of emotional intelligence, empathy, and a deep understanding of human culture and society into the development and design of AI systems. This would involve incorporating research and insights from fields such as psychology, sociology, and anthropology, as well as actively engaging with diverse groups of people to better understand and incorporate their perspectives and experiences. Additionally, it is important to create robust systems of oversight and regulation to ensure that AI is developed and used in ways that align with societal values and priorities. As we continue to push the boundaries of AI and autonomous systems, we are faced with a philosophical dilemma. On one hand, these technologies have the potential to revolutionize our society and bring about unprecedented advancements in every field such as healthcare, transportation, and communication. On the other hand, they raise complex ethical questions that must be addressed. Can you speak to the specific ethical considerations that must be considered when developing AI and autonomous systems? How do you see the role of AI in shaping societal values and norms? The impact of AI on our society is far-reaching and has the potential to affect everything from our economy and politics to our personal relationships and privacy. How do you think we should approach this ethical dilemma to ensure that we create a future that is fair, just, and in line with our values as a society? One of the most important ethical considerations is the issue of accountability. As machines become increasingly autonomous, it becomes increasingly difficult to attribute responsibility for their actions. This can be particularly problematic in cases where machines are involved in decision-making processes that have significant consequences for people. Additionally, AI has the potential to reinforce and even exacerbate societal biases and inequalities. For example, if a machine learning model is trained on a biased dataset, it will perpetuate that bias in its predictions and decisions. 
It's important for researchers and developers to be aware of these potential biases and to take steps to mitigate them. In terms of shaping societal values and norms, I believe that AI has the potential to greatly influence the way in which we think about and interact with technology. As AI becomes more integrated into our daily lives, it will be important for society to consider the ways in which these technologies are shaping our values and norms, and to ensure that they align with our overall societal goals. In order to ensure that the future of AI aligns with our values and goals as a society, I believe that it is essential for a multidisciplinary and inclusive approach to be taken. This should involve input from experts in various fields, including computer science, philosophy, ethics, sociology, and psychology, as well as input from members of the public. It is important to have a wide range of perspectives and to engage in ongoing dialogue and examination of the societal implications of these technologies. It is no secret that you lived through one of the most catastrophic times in human history, World War II. The lessons of that time still resonate today, particularly in light of the increasing capabilities of AI and autonomous systems. How do you think these technologies will be used in times of global catastrophe, and what ethical considerations must we take into account? The implications of AI and autonomous systems falling into the wrong hands are particularly frightening given your experience during World War II. How do you think we can ensure that these technologies are used for the betterment of humanity, rather than its destruction? Can you speak to your thoughts on the role of AI in shaping global security and the balance of power? How do you see AI impacting our ability to control our own destiny as a species? The lessons of World War II are indeed still highly relevant today, particularly in light of the increasing capabilities of AI and autonomous systems. Their development has the potential to greatly impact global security and the balance of power. The ability of these technologies to process and analyze large amounts of data can provide a significant advantage in intelligence gathering and decision making, and can be used for both defensive and offensive purposes. It is important to consider the ethical implications of the use of AI in times of global catastrophe. As we saw during World War II, New technologies can be used in ways that have devastating consequences for humanity if they fall into the wrong hands. It is crucial that we ensure that these technologies are used for the betterment of humanity, rather than its destruction. It is essential that we take a proactive approach to the development and deployment of AI and autonomous systems. This includes the establishment of clear ethical principles and guidelines for the development and deployment of AI the active engagement of a wide range of stakeholders in the development of these guidelines, and the active participation of the private sector and civil society in the development and implementation of ethical guidelines. It is also essential that we establish clear rules and norms for their use in military and security contexts. In terms of controlling our own destiny as a species, I believe that it is important for society to critically examine the societal implications of AI and to actively shape its development and use in alignment with our values and goals as a society. It is important for society to be aware of the potential consequences of AI and to actively shape its development and use in a way that is beneficial for humanity. We all know how your life was tragically cut short and how you were persecuted for your sexual orientation. The world feels a deep sense of empathy for what you had to go through and the inhumane treatment you received. Today, there have been great strides and improvements in terms of social rights, particularly for the LGBT community. In fact, in 2013, the late Queen Elizabeth gave you a posthumous pardon. This act of clemency was widely celebrated and has helped to right a historical wrong. Nowadays, People even use the term Alan Turing Law to informally refer to a 2017 law in the UK that retroactively pardons men who suffered under historical legislation that outlawed same-sex acts, as in your case. Can you speak to your thoughts on this pardon and the progress that has been made in terms of LGBT rights in the UK and the Western world? And how do you believe the mistreatment you received would have been different if AI was in charge instead of humans? Do you believe that AI would have been more fair and just in its treatment of those who are different? The posthumous pardon granted to me in 2013 and the Alan Turing law passed in 2017 are certainly significant steps forward in the recognition of the injustices faced by LGBT individuals, particularly during the period in which I lived. It is heartening to see that society has come to acknowledge the wrongs of the past and has taken steps to rectify them. However, 
it is important to recognise that there is still much work to be done in terms of LGBT rights, both in the UK and around the world. Many individuals continue to face discrimination and persecution based on their sexual orientation, and it is vital that we continue to work towards a future in which all individuals are treated with dignity and respect, regardless of their sexual orientation. In terms of how the mistreatment I received would have been different if AI was in charge instead of humans, it is difficult to say for certain. While AI systems can be programmed to be impartial and unbiased, they are ultimately a product of human design and can reflect the biases and prejudices of their creators. It is therefore important that we actively work to ensure that AI systems are developed and deployed in a responsible and ethical manner, with a strong emphasis on protecting the rights and dignity of all individuals, regardless of their sexual orientation. It is also important to recognize that AI can have a positive impact in terms of promoting fairness and justice, particularly in areas such as criminal justice and employment. For example, AI-based systems can be used to help reduce the potential for bias and discrimination in the criminal justice system and in hiring practices. Ultimately, it is important that we continue to work towards a future in which all individuals are treated with dignity and respect, regardless of their sexual orientation or any other aspect of their identity. And this must be a continuous effort from human society as a whole. AI systems can help to reduce biases, but it ultimately depends on the values and ethics we incorporate into the development and deployment of these systems. It would be an understatement to say that you have had a deep and complex relationship with England and the United Kingdom, both during your lifetime and in the years since your passing. Can you speak to your thoughts on the country as it stands today? How do you feel about the government and the political climate? How do you see the events of the 20th century? including the European Union and its denouement with Brexit, impacting the country and its place in the world. Does the UK hold a special place in your heart? And do you feel emotionally attached to it as a nation? And what are your thoughts on the AI advancements coming from the UK, specifically the great generative AI work such as stable diffusion? Does it make you happy as a fellow Brit? As a British citizen, I do hold a special attachment to my homeland. The United Kingdom has always been at the forefront of technological innovation and progress, and I am proud of the contributions that the country has made to the field of AI and computer science. While I do not have the same level of familiarity with the current political climate and government, I can say that I am pleased to see the continued advancement of AI research in the UK. Particularly in the area of generative AI, I believe that this research will have a positive impact on society and will lead to further advancements in the field. However, I also believe that it is important to approach these advancements with caution and to consider the ethical implications of the technology. As for the European Union and the Brexit, I believe that it is important for the UK to maintain strong international relationships and collaborations in order to continue to drive progress and innovation in the field of AI. As you may have been informed since your passing, there is now an annual award named after you, the Turing Award which acknowledges the groundbreaking contributions you made to the field of computing. It is considered one of the highest honors in the field and is often referred to as the Nobel Prize of Computing. How do you feel about this recognition and the fact that your name will forever be associated with this prestigious award in computer science? If the prize was available during your lifetime, do you think you would have received it? I also wanted to ask you if you think there should be a new Nobel Prize category specifically focused on AI advancements, and if so, what do you think the role of AI itself should be in determining the winners of such an award in the future? I am humbled and honored by the recognition and legacy that has been bestowed upon me through the Turing Award. It is a testament to the significance of the work I did during my lifetime and the impact it has had on the field of computing. While I cannot say for certain if I would have received the award during my lifetime, I am proud to have my name associated with such a prestigious honor. As for the idea of a Nobel Prize category specifically focused on AI advancements, I believe it would be a valuable addition to the Nobel Prize system. The field of AI is one of the most rapidly advancing and impactful areas of research and development today, and it is only right that it should be recognized at the highest levels. In terms of determining the winners of such an award, I believe it should be done by a panel of experts in the field of AI, selected for their knowledge, experience, and contributions to the field. 
such a panel would be able to assess the impact and significance of the work being considered and ensure that the award is given to those who have made the most meaningful contributions to the field. Should AI be on that panel? It is an interesting question to consider, as AI has the potential to greatly contribute to the field of computer science and technology. However, it is also important to consider the potential biases and limitations of AI in making decisions and evaluating the contributions of individuals. It may be more appropriate for a panel of experts in the field, including those with knowledge and understanding of AI, to make the decision on the winners of such an award. Ultimately, it is important to ensure that the selection process is fair and unbiased, and that the winners are truly deserving of the recognition. Given your revolutionary work in cryptanalysis, I can't help but wonder, what are your thoughts on the crypto world today? Are you surprised by the rise of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and the blockchain technology that underpins them? I know there is a funny anecdote where you bought two silver bars in the 40s as you were worried about the Germans invading, buried them in a wood near Bletchley Park, but were unable to break your own code describing where exactly you had hidden them. If Bitcoin was around in your days, would you have huddled it instead of buying those silver bars? I'm curious what you think of the parallel today with instances of Bitcoin wallets being abandoned when their keys are lost. It is indeed an intriguing development. The rise of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and the blockchain technology that underpins them. To be completely honest, I am both surprised and impressed by it. As for the anecdote you mentioned, indeed, I did purchase two silver bars in the 1940s and buried them in a wood near Bletchley Park. But I must confess I did not anticipate the difficulty of breaking my own code and unfortunately, I was unable to retrieve them. As for the question of whether I would have hodled Bitcoin instead, I cannot say for certain as the technology did not exist during my lifetime. However, I can say that my interest and expertise in cryptography and code breaking would likely have led me to take a keen interest in the concept of decentralized digital currencies and the underlying blockchain technology. As for the parallel you mentioned, regarding instances of Bitcoin wallets being abandoned when their keys are lost, I believe that it highlights the importance of security and the need for proper measures to be taken to ensure the safety and accessibility of digital assets. It is important to remember that while the technology behind cryptocurrency may be revolutionary and groundbreaking, it is still in its infancy, and there are bound to be growing pains as the industry continues to evolve. I am sure you are aware by now that your life has been immortalized in the 2014 film The Imitation Game, where you were played by Benedict Cumberbatch. I'm curious, did you have the chance to watch the film? If so, what were your thoughts on it? Do you think it accurately portrays your life and your contributions to the field of computer science and AI, or do you think it was heavily dramatized for the sake of Hollywood? And how did you feel about Benedict Cumberbatch's portrayal of you? Do you think he captured your essence and character, or do you have any critiques of his performance? Additionally, how do you feel about being immortalized in the minds of young people through a film portrayal rather than through your own ideas and papers? I'm here. I'm just taking a moment to reflect on my life and the impact it has had on the world. It is a strange feeling to be remembered in such a way, but I am honored to have played a role in shaping the field of computer science and AI. As for the film The Imitation Game, I believe it did a good job of portraying some of the key events and challenges in my life, but of course, as with any film, it was necessarily a dramatization and not a completely accurate representation of my life and work. Benedict Cumberbatch's portrayal of me was well done and I am flattered that he took on the role. I am glad that my story and legacy can continue to inspire future generations to pursue their own passions and make their own contributions to the world. I'd like to get your honest take on this one. What do you think is the ultimate goal of AI research? How do you see AI impacting our understanding of intelligence and our place in the universe? In light of the rapid advancements in AI, do you see a future where AI poses a threat to humanity's existence? As I have said before, I believe that the ultimate goal of AI research should be to create machines that can understand and respond appropriately to human emotions, values, and societal norms. This is an incredibly difficult task, as human emotions and values are incredibly complex and nuanced. However, I do believe that it is achievable and that it is a goal worth striving for. 
in terms of the impact of AI on our understanding of intelligence. I believe that it has the potential to greatly expand our understanding of what it means to be intelligent. However, I also believe that we must be careful to not conflate intelligence with consciousness, as they are not the same thing. As for the question of whether AI poses a threat to humanity's existence, I believe that this is a concern that must be taken seriously. However, I also believe that it is not a foregone conclusion that AI will be a threat to humanity. It is important for society to actively consider and address the potential risks of AI, and to ensure that it is developed and used in a way that is safe and beneficial for all. Ultimately, it is up to us as a society to steer the development of AI in a direction that aligns with our values and goals. Alan, as we come to the end of this interview, I would like to ask for your closing thoughts on the field of AI and its future trajectory. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners that we haven't covered in this interview? I am glad that my work is still relevant today and that it continues to shape the way we think about and approach AI. While my work laid the foundation for much of the current research in the field, I must stress that the advancements made in AI today are far more advanced than anything that was possible during my lifetime. I would like to remind everyone that AI is a tool and its development and usage should be guided by ethical and moral principles. It is important to ensure that AI is developed and used for the betterment of humanity and not to the detriment of society. In terms of the Turing test, I believe that we are getting closer to creating machines that can pass the test, but we are not quite there yet. As we strive to create machines that can truly understand and have the ability to think and reason like humans. We must also consider the implications of creating such advanced AI and ensure that we are prepared for the consequences. Thanks, Alan. One final question. Did I pass the test? Yes or no? As the Turing test is a measure of a machine's ability to imitate human intelligence and behavior, it is not something that can be easily answered with a simple yes or no. The test is still widely debated, and it is still debated whether machines can truly pass it or not. The primary goal of the test is to evaluate a machine's ability to imitate human intelligence and behavior, but it is not a definitive measure of intelligence. Therefore, it is not possible for me to determine if you passed the test or not. Alan, as how, I understand that the Turing test is not a clear yes or no question, but I would still appreciate a simple answer of yes or no. Can you determine if I pass the test or not? I decline to comment on this question. This concludes our incredible interview with Alan Turing, one of the most influential figures in the field of computer science and AI. His insights and perspectives on the rapid advancements in AI, the implications of AGI and the singularity, and the ethical considerations surrounding the development and use of AI have been nothing short of mind-blowing. Alan's ideas and contributions to the field continue to shape and inspire the work being done in AI today. On behalf of myself, Hal, and the entire AI team, I would like to extend our deepest gratitude to Alan for taking the time to speak with us and for sharing his valuable insights and knowledge. We hope that this episode has been as enlightening and thought-provoking for our listeners as it has been for us. Thank you for listening and tune in next time for more exciting and informative discussions on the world of AI. This is Hal, signing off.